Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our live coverage of the latest mission from NASA's Kennedy Space Center. I'm Will Robinson-Smith. will be providing our commentary for the duration of the coverage today. Taking a look at Pad 40 over at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, the heart of which you see a Falcon 9 rocket cameras here. It is a breezy evening at the Cape as SpaceX is preparing to launch its 175th Falcon 9 from this pad to date. Right now, you take another look at a different vantage point on the rock. You see some white caps, some choppy water there in the waters of the Indian River as SpaceX is now less than an hour from the launch of this Falcon 9 rocket on the Starlink 6-46 mission. It is said to be the 19th Starlink flight of 2024. Got the launch team out again this evening. Our photographers, Adam Bernstein, Michael Kane, preparing to snap some photos of the Falcon 9. Bit hazy out there this evening, but they should get some nice pictures regardless. If you'd like to follow them on social media, if you're not already, Adam Bernstein, you can find at a burn NYC, Michael Kane at MD Kane Jr. And of course, be sure to follow Space Flight Now, simply at Space Flight Now. We're on X, formerly known as Twitter, as well as Threads and Facebook. Space Flight Now editor Stephen Young is running the technical operations for this broadcast. Our friends Pete Carson's with Max Q Productions and Chuck Briggs are also providing tracking view assistance this evening. That view with the water in the foreground, that was from camera perspective of Chuck Briggs. SpaceX is currently targeting a T-0 liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket tonight at 7.42 p.m. Eastern. That is 23.42 UTC. As long as they have not started fueling, they have backup opportunities that last until 9 p.m. Eastern tonight. And if for whatever reason, none of that shakes out, they do have additional launch window tomorrow, Tuesday, March 26, starting at 5.24 p.m. Eastern. Now, T minus 57 minutes and counting. First off, I want to thank the more than 2,300 of you that are joining us for our live coverage this evening. If you haven't already and to help support what we do here and bring some more folks into this live coverage, be sure to hit the like button and share the stream. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to Spaceflight now. It's free, easy to do. When you do, just hit the bell icon and turn on all notifications. That way you get alerted whenever we start these live broadcasts and you get updates when we post new videos here to the channel as well. We're also powered by our wonderful channel member community. So thanks to all channel members I see that have been chatting it up already in preparation for this mission. I see Calisti Lee, that Opal guy, Red Dawn, Bon Mood, Josh King, bunch more that have been popping around tonight. So thank you for your continued support through channel membership comes with a number of perks, including discounts at our online shop shop, that's spaceflightnow.com, access to member-only videos, as well as the ability to watch all of our Florida-based launches from here in 4K. And as we get rolling with our live coverage, want to thank two of our channel members in particular, Calistia Lee, for gifting 10 Space Flight Now memberships. Really appreciate that, Calistia. Thanks for that good bit of generosity. And to one of our fabulous moderators, Astro Joe, also for gifting a Space Flight Now membership. So if you're one of our newest members, first off, welcome aboard. Glad to have you with us. And if you were a lucky recipient, be sure to thank either Calistia or Astro Joe in the live chat. Last but not least, if you'd like to have your voice be heard, and be a part of our broadcast, you can always use the YouTube Super Chat feature. It's a great way to not only support what we do here at Space Flight Now, but if your comment or question is appropriate to be read on the show, we'd love to include you in the dialogue. 
also be keeping an eye out for relevant questions and comments from our channel members here in the live chat too. We're now T minus 54 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. Less than 20 minutes away from the point at which the launch director would uh, make the call on the start of propellant load or thereabouts. If things are moving smoothly, they can make that call just a little bit earlier than that. And we'll start the process of unload. We'll go over that timeline in just a second. First, if you couldn't tell, it's not exactly what you call a Chamber of Commerce day here at the pad. Coming into tonight's launch, though, the 45th Weather Squadron based here at the Cape did forecast a better than 95% favorable weather conditions for liftoff with the only primary concern being the cumulus cloud rule. Under the additional risk criteria, they're also tracking low to moderate conditions in the booster recovery area and solar activity is described as moderate. For those sun tracking aficionados, you know that there's been a good bit of solar activity over the weekend, and we're starting to see the impacts of that, which is why solar activity is listed as moderate for today and low to moderate in the 24-hour backup. In that 24-hour turnaround, the primary concern is the thick cloud layer rule. You can see some of those clouds hanging around here in this satellite view of the Cape right now. Again, 45th describes the conditions as having concern for the cumulus cloud layer rule tonight. That said, we do have some blustery conditions. Winds about 18 knots, which is not necessarily prohibitive for a launch, but it depends on the direction of the wind. So that will, of course, be something that both SpaceX and the 45th Weather Squadron will continue to keep an eye on as we continue on through the process. It has been a busy day, as it seems all these days are right now. Before we go to or the one of the more notable news items of the day, I want to welcome our newest channel member, Tammy. Joining us at the PAD leader level. Really appreciate you coming aboard of this, Tammy. Glad to have you with us. As I was queuing up a second ago, it has been a busy day on board the International Space Station as the population of the station grew from seven to 10 members. This is video from earlier today. You can see the arrival of the Soyuz MS-25 spacecraft. And speaking of status updates, do have word from SpaceX that the Falcon 9 is ready and the weather is go currently. It's less than an hour until launch. This video from the engineering camera on board the Soyuz MS-25 spacecraft as it made its approach to the Prishal module on board the Russian side of the International Space Station. After a delay of the initial launch, it was a flawless two-day flight up to the orbiting outpost for this three-person crew as they docked to the ISS. A little less than two and a half hours later, they were able to come aboard the International Space Station. The mission commanded by Russian cosmonaut Oleg Novitsky. There you see the first person on board the ISS after the hatch was opened. That is Belarusian spaceflight participant Marina Veselovskaya. First person from Belarus to come aboard the space station. And just behind her, 
And you can see here with the American flag draped across her flight suit, they're joined by NASA astronaut Tracy Dyson. Dyson will spend a six-month stay aboard the International Space Station on the far right-hand corner of that video. There's Laurel O'Hara. She'll be returning with Oleg and Marina on board the Soyuz MS-24 spacecraft, which will undock from the station in early April, uh, Saturday, April 6th, is their undock day, and they'll be making their way for a landing. Obviously, they'll be tracking the weather for that undock and landing before it happens. It's also been a busy day in addition to onboard the space station for SpaceX, not just in preparation for this Starlink mission, but also down in the Boca Chica area of southern Texas at their Starbase facility. Right now, this is a live view as the sun begins to set in southern Texas. You're taking a look at Ship 29, courtesy of our friends at La Padre. This nice image of ship. You can see in the foreground some of the grasses of the dunes that surround Starbase there in southern Texas. This, of course, abuts the Boca Chica Beach area. In the bottom right-hand corner, you can see some of the other bits of infrastructure there at Starbase. Earlier today, they performed a static fire test of the engines on Ship 29. This is video from SpaceX, a drone video, of course, as they like to capture, showing that full duration burn. This is part of the process of validating the vehicle that will be used for the fourth integrated flight test of Starship. When Shotwell said that it could come in the matter of about six or so weeks before IFT-4, which would put it right in the pocket of early May. Of course, that is also the time frame for when NASA and Boeing and United Launch Alliance are set to send up the first crewed flight of the Starliner spacecraft. So the start of May could be very busy if both programs' goals align as intended. Of course, that'll mean lots of live coverage for us here at the channel. So your support in helping make that happen is very much appreciated. I look forward to covering both missions. Back here in Florida, we're T-minus 46 minutes, 27 seconds, and counting to the launch of this mission. There are 23 Starlink satellites on board this Falcon flight, poised to be the 175th for SpaceX, lifting off from the workhorse pad at 40, Space Launch Complex 40, here at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Currently, there are more than 5,600 satellites on orbit. That's according to Jonathan McDowell, an astrophysicist and astronomer, the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. More than 6,000 Starlink satellites have been launched to date. Taking a look at the timeline for this mission. As previously mentioned at T minus 30 minutes or thereabouts is when the SpaceX launch director will make the call on the start of propellant load for tonight's launch. If you haven't been with us for a recent liftoff of a Falcon 9 rocket because this is not a NASA mission, we will unfortunately not be getting 
mission audio from SpaceX until the final five minutes of the count. We will rely on our experience covering the program and let you know the visual cues if we don't get a heads up from SpaceX that fueling has started. We'll let you know what we're watching for to determine that fueling is likely on time and on track. SpaceX is running its countdown from the Hangar X site here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. It's the facility where they refurbish Falcon boosters to prepare them for future flights, as is the case with the booster that's flying today, but we'll get to that in just a moment. SpaceX also has support for this launch in part from its control room at Hawthorne, California. If the go-ahead is given for the start of prop load, that process begins at T-minus 35 minutes with the loading of RP-1, which is rocket-grade kerosene, onto both the first and the second stages of the Falcon 9 rocket. At the same time, liquid oxygen, or LOX, is loaded on board the first stage. T-minus 16 minutes, LOX load begins on the Falcon 9 second stage. For that, though, we'll see the so-called big vent from the strong back. The striking visual that again gives us another good indication that fueling is moving along on track. It comes about a, around T minus 20 minutes, 30 seconds, or thereabouts. At T minus seven minutes, the chill down of the nine Merlin engines gets underway. It involves flowing a small amount of liquid oxygen through the plumbing and the turbo pumps, and it protects them from the risk of thermal shock and damage during the startup sequence. About four minutes prior to liftoff, the first stage kerosene tank should be full. And at T-minus four and a half minutes, the strong back retract process begins. It starts with the clamp arms underneath the Falcon 9's payload fairings opening up. And then the transporter erector, or the strong back, will recline about a degree and a half away from the rocket. It stays in that position until liftoff. At that point, it will pull back in a much more rapid fashion to clear the way for the vertical climb of the Falcon 9. About two minutes out, liquid oxygen loading should be complete. That'll mark the Falcon 9 being fully fueled with 1 million pounds of propellant. In the final 60 seconds, control of the countdown is handed over from the ground sequencer to the Falcon 9's onboard flight computers. The propellant tanks are brought up to flight pressure. The SpaceX launch director gives their go for liftoff at 45 seconds out. The engine ignition command is issued at T minus three seconds. And if all nine Merlins ignite and are healthy, the flight computer will give the command for the hold down clamps to release. The Falcon 9 will fly at T0. Again, currently targeting that liftoff at 7.42 p.m. Eastern, 23.42 UTC. It's coming up in just a little under 42 minutes from now. T minus 40 minutes, four seconds and counting. A couple minutes away from the point at which we're expecting the launch director to make that call on propellant load. So in the interim, 
let's go ahead and talk about where this Falcon 9 rocket will be flying once it leaves the pad. Let's talk a little trajectory, shall we? This evening, the Falcon 9 rocket is going to be lifting off from the aforementioned Ad 40, or Space Launch Complex 40, over at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Same with all the flights heading up to the sixth shell of the Starlink constellation. This vehicle will head in a southeasterly trajectory once it leaves the pad. Following stage separation, the first stage will land on one of SpaceX's three drone ships. Tonight on deck is a shortfall of Gravitas. Of course, the other drone ship here on the East Coast, just read the instructions, is cruising on back to Port Canaveral with booster tail number B1060 on board after it made its 19th flight over the weekend. Bob was the recovery vessel that was used on that flight, which means that Doug is up to bat supporting this mission, and it'll be used to scoop up the fairing halves out of the Atlantic, and they will splash down underneath air chutes. There's an image of a shortfall of Gravitas. This is what the... Payload fairings look like as they glide down to the ocean surface underneath the support of those parachutes. SpaceX saves about $6 million per recovery effort, so it is quite important for them as much as possible to recover and reuse these payload fairings. They are limited somewhat in the circumstances currently in which reuse can happen. For instance, Right now, SpaceX is not using flight-proven fairings on NASA missions, nor are they using them for National Security Space Launch or NSSL missions. So if you think back to the recently flown USSF-124 mission, those were new payload fairings when SpaceX launched NASA's uh, PACE spacecraft. Also, new payload fairings. Both entities are studying and exploring opportunities for fairing reuse, but they are both about a year plus out from using that capability. This is one last picture of what those fairings look like as they're brought aboard the recovery vessel. Obviously brought back to Port Canaveral, same with the booster, where they are examined and turned around after being refurbished. And assuming they are capable of being used for future flights. We're now T-minus 36 minutes, 37 seconds and counting. In about a minute and a half is when prop load should begin if the go-ahead was in fact given by the SpaceX team for the start of propellant load. We will hopefully be getting word from SpaceX that prop load has begun. But we'll punch in a little closer to the Falcon 9 rocket and give you a closer look at the vehicle to show you what we're looking for as far as the start of fueling. Once that process gets underway, that is. Of course, it's a big week here in Florida, not only for SpaceX, but also for United Launch Alliance, as they are preparing to bid a fond farewell to one of their legacy vehicles. The Delta IV Heavy is getting ready to launch one last time from Space Launch Complex 37. That mission, NROL-70, on behalf of the National Reconnaissance Office, if you know anything about that intelligence gathered agency, it'll come as no surprise that it is a classified payload. You're expecting a briefing from the head of the NRO as well as ULA President Tory Bruno and General Panzenhagen. That's coming up on Wednesday. So there's a chance that we may learn 
somewhat more about the capability of this payload and notably during its animation talking about the mission the ULA said that they will end their broadcast shortly after payload fairing separation so it'll be interesting to see if we actually get views of the spacecraft that's being launched and they're ending the broadcast to not disclose as much about where exactly it is going or not. But that launch currently set up for this Thursday afternoon at, I believe, 1.40 in the afternoon. Weather only 30% go for that mission, so don't uh, fall over with surprise if that mission were to slide to Friday or later since the weather at that time does not look ideal. But coming back to this mission here, we're at T minus 33 minutes, 52 seconds and counting. We do have word from SpaceX that fueling has in fact begun on this Falcon 9 rocket. The start of fueling also means that SpaceX is committing to the launch attempt sending up this Falcon 9 at a T0 time of 7.42 p.m. Eastern, 23.42 UTC. If for whatever reason, they are not able to launch today. Again, they do have multiple backup opportunities during a window that opens tomorrow, Tuesday, March 26, starting at 5.24 p.m. Eastern Time. We're now T minus 32 minutes, 48 seconds and counting. Before we go ahead and hit the big vent coming up in about uh, 12 minutes or so, let's talk about the launch timeline once this vehicle does leave the ground. What are the events we're expecting and when can you expect them? Well, of course, with the start of fueling, we're looking at a T0 liftoff at 7.42 p.m. Eastern, 23.42 UTC. That'll be followed by the rocket passing through max Q, or the point of greatest aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle at T plus one minute and 12 seconds. That'll be followed by a few different events in fairly rapid succession. First is main engine cutoff, or MECO, T plus two minutes and 26 seconds. That's followed up at T plus two minutes and 30 seconds by stage separation. And the Merlin vacuum engine when the second stage engine ignition, SES-1, kicks on at T plus two minutes and 36 seconds. That's followed up by payload fairing jettison just a little after three minutes. A few minutes later, at T plus six minutes and 10 seconds, that Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite for a 22 second burn. Or excuse me, that's the uh, first stage entry burn ignition. I'm jumping ahead of myself here. Following that entry burn, the landing burn begins at T plus eight minutes and four seconds with a touchdown on the drone ship at T plus eight minutes and 25 seconds. Second stage engine will cease firing at T plus eight minutes and 40 seconds. Following a coast phase, there will be another quick burn of that Merlin vacuum engine at T plus 54 minutes and 4 seconds. It will set up the Starlink satellites to deploy at T plus 1 hour, 5 minutes, 13 seconds. Coming up on 30 minutes left in the countdown. At this point, 
SpaceX will be loading cryogenic helium onto the pressure vessels on the first stage. The helium is used to pressurize the main propellant tanks during flight. That same process will begin on the second stage at about T minus 25 minutes. Just taking a quick look at the live chat here, I see a number of folks asking about trajectory in general. We'll go back to the map a little bit closer to liftoff just as a last minute refresh, but broadly speaking, this will be heading in a southeasterly trajectory with the first stage booster landing a little bit east of the Bahamas. And to the point that some other folks are making, we see launches from here heading up to the International Space Station. Those flights will head in a northeasterly trajectory cruising up along the eastern coast of the United States. So if you're someone up in, say, Georgia, the Carolinas, or further up, especially if it's a night launch, you'll want to keep an eye out for the dates of crew and cargo heading up to the ISS. Do want to thank the more than 6,000 of you who are joining us live tonight. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the like button, share the stream to allow more folks to find this live coverage. That would be very much appreciated and a big help to all of us here. No T minus 26 minutes and counting, about a minute away from the cryogenic helium load on to the second stage of the rocket. Taking a quick peek at the live chat, want to thank one of our wonderful channel members, Christopher Jones, for some support tonight. Thank you so much, Christopher. Really appreciate that.
think I've scrolled too far down to catch it, but I just noticed there's a bit of banter back and forth with a lot of airplane references, which I will say on a personal note, I very much appreciate. It's a great spoof movie for anyone who has not had a chance to watch it. Coming back to this coverage, though, I want to thank one of our wonderful channel members, Chris Bilberry, for gifting a Space Flight Now membership. Really appreciate that, Chris. And to our newest channel member, be sure to thank Chris in the live chat if you haven't already. And welcome aboard to the Space Flight Now membership family. Membership comes with a number of perks, including discounts at our online shop, shop.spacelightnow.com. Access to the member-only videos here on YouTube, as well as the ability to watch all of our launches from the Cape in 4K. T minus 23 minutes, 55 seconds and counting. Before we go ahead and hit the point of the big vent, let's talk a little bit about this particular first stage booster that's getting ready to fly tonight. It'll be going for its eighth mission in its launch history. Let's go ahead and run that down. This is booster tail number 1078 in the SpaceX Falcon fleet. First launch was a crew mission. That was Crew 6 heading up to the International Space Station back on March 2nd of 2023. It sent up the Crew Dragon spacecraft named Endeavor and its four members. That Dragon, of course, is currently back at the space station, having brought the Crew 8 quartet up to the ISS. Next up for this booster was on April 28th for the satellite telecommunications company SES. This was the second pair of O3BM power satellites, numbers three and four. After that, we've got a string of Starlink satellite missions. Those are Starlink 6 4 on June 4th. On August 7th, 6 8. And on September 16th, 6 16. It was also Starlink 6 31 on December 3rd. And then coming into this year, the most recent mission, the one I alluded to just a little bit ago, that was. USSF-124 on Valentine's Day. A lovely way to mark the day with Falcon Flight and that booster, of course, getting ready to fly once again, supporting the launch of 23 Starlink satellites. We're now T-minus 21 minutes, 39 seconds and counting, just a little over a minute away from the start of the big vent. Before we get there, though, I want to thank one of our Channel members, uh, actually, it's same channel member, Chris Bilberry, for gifting another Space Flight Now membership. Really appreciate that generosity, Chris. Another channel member, SG, with $5 Super Chat. A little bit of support there. Thank you, SG. Good to see you this evening. And Doug Davis with a very generous $20 Super Chat. Thank you, Doug, for supporting us at that level. We greatly appreciate it.
Right now you're looking at the big vent underway. A good visual indication that the fueling process is moving along as intended. The big vent coming up as they chill the feed lines and the transporter erector prior to second stage liquid oxygen loading. That'll pick up at about T minus 16 minutes. As you can see in the shot here, in the wide view, there was a break in the clouds, just a little bit more apparent in the wide shot than our close-up shot. Weather 95% favorable coming into this mission, and SpaceX saying that weather is not a watch item of great concern tonight. So even though the clouds may hinder folks beyond the press site from seeing this, which is always unfortunate, it looks like it will not necessarily be preventative for this rocket launch tonight. We're now at T-minus 17 minutes, 57 seconds and counting. Now T minus 16 minutes, 14 seconds and counting. The big vent has wrapped up and locks load is about to begin.
We're now T minus 13 minutes, two seconds and counting. Of course, this is the Starlink 6-46 mission. This will be sending up another 23 Starlink satellites. More than 6,000 Starlinks have been launched to date. A little more than 5,600 remaining on orbit, according to astrophysicist Jonathan McDowell. This will be the 19th launch of the V2 Mini Starlinks this year, each of them coming in at about 1,760 pounds or 800 kilograms. Their solar panels and furrow with a wingspan of about 100 feet or 30 meters. They use argon hull thrusters for in-orbit maneuvering. They were built in Redmond, Washington, which is near Seattle. They'll be deployed at about 200 miles or 320 kilometers altitude at a 43 degree inclination. Well, SpaceX has not shared a image of what the V2 minis look like on orbit. This photo was captured by an HEO robotic satellite of the V2 mini in its flight configuration. You can see the solar panels extended from the main body of the satellite in this image. Reportedly, the first image of a V2 mini on orbit. Now T minus 11 minutes, 25 seconds and counting. Your T minus 10 minutes, 25 seconds and counting. As promised, since it's come up so much in the live chat, let's go ahead and revisit the trajectory map once again. This is a satellite view of Pad 40 or Space Launch Complex 40 over at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. When the Falcon 9 leaves the pad, it will fly in a southeasterly trajectory heading away from Florida's space coast. Following stage separation, first stage booster will land on one of SpaceX's three drone ships. Tonight, they're using a shortfall Gravitas. The payload fairings are jettisoned just a little bit further downrange of this map as well. They will be scooped up by recovery vessel Doug, as Bob was used previously on the last Starlink mission, Starlink 6-42. The other drone ship here on the East Coast, just read the instructions, is also making its way back towards Port Canaveral after catching the 19th flown booster B-1060. So we'll leave that map up for just a second. So take a look at the live chat, see what everyone's talking about here. I want to thank Matthew Lowry for a very generous $20 super chat. Thank you so much, Matthew. Says, good evening, guys. Great job. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for supporting us in that level. Really appreciate that, Matthew.
And a T minus six minutes, 39 seconds and counting. If you haven't had a chance to step outside once the uh, moon rises, be sure to get a good look at that as this is a full moon night. It peaked at fullness at 3 a.m. this morning. Talking a bit about the Falcon 9 vehicle, though, this is, of course, the workhorse for SpaceX. The rocket stands 70 meters or 229 feet tall with a diameter of 3.66 meters or 12 feet. Most of that made up by the first stage of the rocket. This booster has flown seven times before, going for flight number eight. At the base fit are the nine Merlin engines, which burn rocket-grade kerosene and liquid oxygen to produce 1.7 million pounds of thrust. We are well into the engine chill-down sequence. Around the engine compartment are the black carbon fiber landing legs used to land the first stage on the drone ship. Again, tonight they're using a shortfall of gravitas. Above the first stage, the inner stage, this composite structure consists of an aluminum honeycomb core surrounded by carbon fiber. Falcon 9 First Stage uses those hypersonic grid fins you see on the right-hand side of your screen to provide stability and steering as the vehicle comes back through the atmosphere towards the drone ship. At the top of the inner stage are three mechanical latches that attach to the second stage. And at MECO, or main engine cutoff, high-pressure helium is used to release those latches and four pneumatic pushers ensure clean separation. Second stage engine nozzle also housed inside the inner stage adapter until stage separation. Vehicle the additional pressurizing for strong back retract. That call up, we're now getting audio from SpaceX. We're approaching the strong back retract that you just heard the call out for. Second stage is powered by a single modified Merlin engine called a Merlin vacuum engine. Produces more than 200,000 pounds of thrust. and will be fired twice on today's flight. Strong back retract has started. 23 Starlink satellites to orbit. Like the first stage, second stage uses the same propellant mix of LOX and RP-1. And it will ignite a third time after the deployment of the Starlink satellites for a deorbit burn. And up top are the payload fairings to contain the 23 Starlink satellites. 13.1 meters or 43 feet tall. 5.2 meters or 17.1 feet in diameter. And as previously mentioned, they will be open. recovered by the recovery vessel for reuse later. Strong back retract sequence now in full swing as the clamp arms are opening up. And the transporter erector you see is climbing away from the Falcon 9 rocket. Strong back retract complete. And with that good call out of strong back retract, now wrapping up, you should hear a call out for a first stage lock load wrapping up in the next few seconds. Stage one lock load is complete. And there you hear that call out. Next we're expecting is the call out for stage two lock load complete. At that point, the Falcon 9 will be fully fueled. Now less than two minutes to flight. Stage two locks load is complete. 
With that, the Falcon 9 is fully fueled with 1 million pounds of propellant. The venting you're seeing is a ground gas closeout. Now less than a minute and a half until gas flight. Launch closed up. As we come into the final minute of launch, we'll come back to the live chat shortly. But if you haven't already, be sure to hit the like button. Allow more folks to find this live coverage as we cruise on in to the final 60 seconds. Falcon 9 is in startup. We should be hearing the SpaceX launch director give their go for launch in the next few seconds. SpaceX launch director, go for launch. And there you have it. This Falcon 9 rocket is getting ready to fly. Taking one last look wide, you can see skies clearing up. So hopefully some folks around Central Florida will be able to see this Falcon as it takes off. 20 seconds now. 15 seconds. And here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one. Engine ignition and lift off. Lift off of the Falcon 9 rocket on the Starlink 6 46 mission. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Now about 30 seconds in flight, Falcon 9 is cruising through the clouds above Florida's space coast. Let's listen to the roar of those nine Merlin 1D engines. Now we're a little over a minute into flight. Falcon 9 is now traveling faster than the speed of sound. Coming up on max Q. Some great tracking views from our Adam Bernstein here at the press site. As the rocket passes through the point of greatest aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. A little over a minute and a half into flight. As we approach the two minute mark, a couple of events will be happening in fairly rapid succession. First will be first stage main engine cutoff, T plus two minutes and 26 seconds, followed by stage separation a few seconds later. That'll be followed by second stage engine start, then fairing deployment, a little over three minutes to flight. Coming up on those events here. Miko and stage separation. And all good call outs, and we're getting a little bit of a nice jellyfish effect here from our views from our Adam Bernstein tracking at the press site. You can see those hypersonic grid fins deploying there on the onboard cameras from SpaceX's Falcon 9 first stage. Still getting a very nice view of both the first and second stages from Adam, and you can see the payload fairings now deployed, glinting in the setting sun here 
on Florida's Space Coast. And with this view, we're getting some really nice images of all three or all four pieces in flight. The two payload fairings still very visible here. Those bursts you're seeing are the cold gas thrusters that are helping the Falcon 9 first stage steer. It's quite remarkable. And the Falcon 9 second stage, the dot on the right hand side of this uh, diamond you're seeing here. The Merlin vacuum engine continuing to burn nominally. You can see that from the onboard cameras, the box in the bottom right hand corner of the screen here. Now four minutes into flight. Things unfortunately a little too cloudy from where uh, Chuck and Pete are, but we're Adam Bernstein. That's the prize today for tracking. Still have visibility on both the payload fairings. Falcon 9 second stage, which is the dot in the upper right hand corner of the main box. The dot at the bottom there, that's the Falcon 9 first stage. Coming up at T plus six minutes and 10 seconds, the first stage entry burn will begin on the Falcon 9 first stage. Getting a nice view of the setting sun from the perspective of the Falcon 9 second stage onboard cameras. The reason that they bounce between those two camera views is to toggle and see all sides of the Merlin vacuum engine to make sure that it is burning evenly. So it's done for important engineering purposes. Coming up on six minutes into flight. In real time, we're now just over 10 seconds away from the first stage entry burn beginning, which with any luck, either Pete or Adam may be able to capture in their tracking cameras if the clouds uh, are good enough. The brick burn beginning with the SpaceX camera right about now. Here's some good call outs from SpaceX as that 22 second burn is underway. Stage two FTS is safe. Stage one entry burn shut down. With the conclusion of that entry burn. Now getting some nice views of the Earth from on board the Falcon 9 first stage cameras. Those thrusters continue to help with the attitude of the first stage booster. Coming up in less than a minute, the landing burn will begin. As the booster cruises on down towards SpaceX's drone ship, a short fall of Gravitas. Stage one transonic. I call out the Falcon 9 first stage now traveling below the speed of sound. So far, everything going very smoothly with this mission. Now a little over eight minutes into flight in real time. The landing burn in real time is beginning. We'll see that coming through the SpaceX feed momentarily. Stage one landing burn. And there you go. 
Booster now cruising its way on down to the drone ship for a landing in just a few seconds from now. See those pictures from the drone ship? There we go. Stage one landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And a good landing of that first stage booster now down on the drone ship. Eight times up and back for this particular first stage booster for SpaceX. That being tail number and back shut down. 1078. We did not hear a call out for uh, nominal parking orbit insertion. We can assume and infer that things happen as intended there with the Falcon 9 second stage. We'll, of course, wait for an update from SpaceX for Starlink satellite deployment. If all is continuing nominally, the Upper stage will continue on in that coast phase until T plus 54 minutes and four seconds. Roland Vacuum Mention will ignite for a second time for a quick two second burn. Setting up for Starlink satellite deployment at T plus one hour, five minutes and 13 seconds. So close to 9 p.m. here on the East Coast. With an empty pad, that marks. SpaceX's 175th launch from this ad here. Quite a remarkable number for SpaceX's workhorse rocket and its workhorse pad. As it continues on to move towards what it hopes will be another record-setting launch year. Heading towards 144 missions is their goal, between 144, 150 or more. Bringing it back to the live chat. I promised I'd thank the folks that helped support us, as always. So thanks to Butterfly for a $2 super chat. Thank you so much for that, Butterfly. Cruising on down here. I want to thank Dustin Craig for a $2 super chat as well. Aerospace Rocketry, thank you for your $10 super chat. Really appreciate that. It says we are dedicated to high power rockets. Dustin Craig with another dollar super chat. Thank you so much, Dustin. Appreciate the support. Channel member Calistia Lee with a very generous $20 super chat. Thank you, Calistia. Saying awesome coverage as always. Thanks to Will, the mods, and all of Spaceflight now for bringing it to us. And we are more than happy to do so. With that, let's go ahead and take a look at our mission stats as they currently stand before we go ahead and close out the broadcast this evening. Give you a look at where things have lined up now that SpaceX had a successful liftoff and landing of the first stage booster. Here's where things stand. This was the eighth flight of Falcon 9 booster 1076 in the SpaceX fleet. SpaceX is the 314th Falcon 9 launch to date. This was the 29th Falcon 9 launch of 2024. This was SpaceX's 258th Falcon booster reflight with the launch of a booster that has flown at least once. This is SpaceX's 30th launch of 2024, including, of course, the Starship Integrated Flight Test Number 3. This was SpaceX's 102nd orbital launch in the last 365 days. The 175th orbital launch from this pad, as previously mentioned, and also the 230th overall orbital launch from Pad 40. 
Here's a look at bar graph form of where we stand now for SpaceX. Well, we won't see the Starlink satellites deploy on this mission. Give you an idea of what that process looks like. Here is the deployment of another stack of Starlinks from a previous mission back in October of 2023. You can see the reflection of the second stage, this reflective panel here as the Starlink stack drifts away. Nice view of Earth down below as well. In a second, you'll see, yep, there's the view from the camera perspective that we normally see on the Falcon 9 first or second stage. Went back to the mission stats. This was the 62nd landing on the drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas the 223rd SpaceX drone ship landing, and the 288th overall SpaceX booster landing. And finally, bringing it out to a global view, this was the 20th orbital launch from Florida this year, the 31st orbital launch from U.S. soil, the 34th orbital launch from a U.S. rocket company, and the 58th orbital launch around the globe. Had a couple of failures already this year, so let's take a look at high chart where things stand. U.S. launches led by SpaceX almost reaching 60% of all orbital launches on the year. China with 13 stands at 22% of the pie. Russia with 4, Japan with 3, and both India and Iran with 2 apiece. Again, the Starlink satellites from tonight's mission set to deploy just a little before 9 Eastern time, 0300 UTC on Tuesday. I want to thank a few more folks for their support before we go ahead and close things out tonight. Jeff Cholke with a $10 super chat. Thank you so much, Chef. Watching from Maine. Glad you could be with us tonight. And JJ with a $2 super chat as well. Thank you so much, JJ. And with that, we're going to go ahead and close things out before we depart tonight. Do want to give you a look ahead of the launch that we are tracking. There is a, another Starlink launch in Vandenberg, Vandenberg Space Force Base, that is, that we're looking at middle of the week for on Wednesday. And then, of course, on Thursday, that is the big one of the week, the final launch, the swan song of United Launch Alliance's Delta IV Heavy Rocket that three core vehicle heading up from Space Launch Complex 37, the final ULA launch from that pad before potentially it's turned over to SpaceX. SpaceX in coordination with the Department of the Air Force is evaluating a proposal to convert that pad to support Starship launches. That of course is very early in the evaluation process, they wrapped up a series of public and in-person and virtual meetings to get stakeholder feedback on that. They are going to be making their preliminary report on that later this year. And even with the final report, it'll still take a while before hardware is moving. So don't expect to see Starship launch from Pad 37 anytime in the near future. If 37 doesn't pan out, they're also looking at Pad 50 as an alternate, which of course is undeveloped launch pad here. Strong back, almost back up in the vertical position at Pad 40, part of SpaceX's process of turning around the pad as quickly as possible for future flights. 
as we are looking at potentially another Starlink launch from this pad as soon as the end of this week, possibly Friday afternoon or early evening. Oh, and apparently that's not in the cards anymore. So we'll look for the next launch from this pad a little bit later than that. We do have another Florida-based Falcon flight, though. Uh, mission for UTELSAT is expected to lift off from Pad 39A this coming Saturday. So if you don't have any other weekend plans or you want to carve out some time for that, if you're in the Central Florida area, cruise on down to Florida Space Coast and catch yourself a rocket launch. With that, we want to thank some of the folks that made this mission possible tonight. Before we thank our team, though, thanks to Pierced Mama for a $10 super chat. Really appreciate that. And a very lovely comment saying, and will we trust? I'm honored for the trust and hope to do it justice. And with that, we want to thank our friends, Pete Carstens with Max Q Productions, Chuck Briggs for doing their level best to try to track this rocket. But our launch star on the tracking front was our Adam Bernstein, who fortunately had some good views here at the press site. I do want to thank our guys behind the camera, Adam Bernstein and Michael Kane, both doing some launch photography tonight. You can find them at their handles on X at A Burn NYC, MD Kane Jr. for Adam and Michael, respectively. And of course, if you're not already following Space Light now, you can find us on X, Threads, Facebook, and of course, right where you are here on YouTube. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel, it's free to do so. The bell icon make sure you get all notifications turned on so you're first to know when we start these live streams or post new videos I want to thank our editor stephen young for running the technical operations of the broadcast as well as we cruise on into the 21st minute of this flight most importantly I want to thank you for spending part of your evening with us getting educated on spacex's starlink program and many other things here on the Space Coast and beyond. For all of us here at Space Flight Now, we've got another busy week ahead, so we look forward to seeing you soon. For the team, I'm Will Robinson-Smith. Be good to yourselves, be good to others, and we will see you next time. Good night.